Hi, uh, I'm Sandeep. Um, I work in VMware uh, as a software engineer, and I'm one of the uh, engineers uh, supporting this Spring Boot Migrator tool. Uh, today, I'd, I'd like to show you um, the Spring Boot Migrator tool certain capabilities, uh, or what it can do and what it can't do. Uh, before we uh, start, um, I, I would like to look at the problem in general. The problem that we are trying to solve is uh, the repetition. So whenever you have, uh, uh, whenever you do uh, any kind of migration job, it's uh, you do discovery on how to uh, migrate it, and then you do repeatedly over and over again. If you have more than one application, so if you have one or two applications, it's fine. But if you have hundreds, it's a problem. It's a you will have high amount of manual effort. And also, if you have, if you do have hundreds of applications, and you will have teams of developers looking into these uh, applications. The problem uh, will become a consistency. Uh, no, not everybody approach migration in the same way. They, they might configure uh, differently, and your uh, in, ac across your organization, your code will end up looking very different. Uh, our approach uh, to this solution is uh, reduce manual effort as much as possible uh, with the Spring Boot Migrator recipe. Uh, recipe for us is a set of instructions in Spring Boot Migrator two that automates uh, code migrations, uh, sometimes partially, sometimes fully. So the more and more recipes that you have, the less and less manual effort that one needs to do. Uh, before we begin into uh, the actual demo, I would like to uh, look into uh, the workflow of uh, Spring Boot Migrator tool. You'll have uh, an app to migrate, and uh, that you will feed that into Spring Boot Migrator tool. And the Spring Boot Migrator tool will uh, uh, read through the app, uh, recognize some of the patterns uh, in, in the applications, and will provide you recipes. And when you apply these recipes, uh, you will be uh, you will get an automated migrated app. And sometimes this automated migrated app is not enough. Uh, you have to do some manual effort to get into a completely fully migrated app. Uh, what can it do, uh, Spring Boot Migrator? Uh, it, it, right now, uh, Spring Boot Migrator takes in three kinds of uh, projects uh, for migrations. One is Java Enterprise Applications. It can take Java EE app and convert it into a Spring Boot app. It can also do MuleSoft app, uh, convert it into a Spring Boot app. It can also do Spring Boot app to Spring Boot app. Now, uh, differences being the version of it. It can do 2.7 to 3.0. Uh, today, uh, I'd like to demo uh, these uh, these three avenues where uh, Spring Boot Migrator uh, uh, does migrations. Uh, one is Java EE, Mule App, and uh, uh, Spring, uh, Spring 2.7 to 3.0 migration. So let's start with the Java EE migration. I have a demo uh, app ready. Uh, so let let let's take that. So this is the app uh, address. And this is the app that uh, we are trying to migrate. It's a simple um, Java EE app, uh, which is which uses Tom e, uh, Tommy to run um, as an application server. Um, it has uh, a simple call, like a low, uh, it's a REST interface for, for movie details. Uh, it has uh, uh, an entity called movie B. Uh, it says an entity called movie. It has ID, director, title, yes, uh, genre, and rating. And it is a uh, and it has a bean service. Uh, it has a movie bean service which helps you uh, find, edit a movie, delete a movie, get uh, the list of movies, um, and then uh, it, all of it is uh, used in uh, the REST controllers uh, layer. Uh, so there's this movie bean, and you have if you post into slash load, it will uh, it will load uh, these movies and. Uh, there's a movie rest so that you can query this uh, uh, this uh, movies, and uh, you can look at it. There, there is a HS, um, uh, there's an in-memory database, 
Uh, so uh, we don't have any Docker or uh, Docker running in MySQL or anything. Everything is happening on in memory. Um, and uh, let's uh, let's try to uh, let, let's try to run this application um, just to see uh, how it works. So let's do mvn clean install. And then uh, MVN uh, MVN uh, uh, Tommy Tommy run. Okay, and uh, now the Tommy application is running. Uh, let's uh, uh, query. So we'll ask um, uh, these uh, hard-coded movie uh, movies uh, types to be loaded into uh, uh, the in-memory database. Uh, let's do that. So now it's loaded. It's uh, sending it a success response, and then let's get uh, the list of movies. So you do slash list slash movies, and you have uh, the loaded movies uh, printed out for you. Now, uh, with this simple uh, project, uh, let's try to migrate this uh, to a Spring Boot application. Uh, the way that you do that is um, uh, uh, you uh, you fire up uh, this application called uh, uh, Spring Boot Migrator .jar. You can find this jar uh, from our uh, open source repository. You can download it uh, from releases, or you can build it uh, locally. Uh, so let's uh, run this Java minus jar spring boot spring boot migrator dot jar. So spring boot migrator uh, takes a set of commands uh, to interact uh, where with the application. One of the command is scan. This is the way that you are feeding the application to spring boot migrator. So scan and you give uh, the applic uh, the application path. It says scan uh, this movie fund rest. So now it's uh, scanning, reading the source code, and uh, figuring out what and all recipes that uh, uh, it has in its bank uh, to uh, to migrate this application. And these are the uh, these are the recipes that it figured out. And the first recipe uh, initializes the spray Spring Boot migration. Now what it does is it will convert this. Uh, 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 JEE application uh, into a Spring Boot application by uh, including the right dependencies uh, uh, from Spring Boot. So let's uh, the the way that you run a recipe is uh, using apply command apply and then the command uh, the recipe name. So once this is successful, um, what happens is uh, it has made the um, made the necessary changes and it has committed uh, into into the Git log. So you can see uh, what only this recipe has uh, has done. So initialize Spring Boot migration. What has it done? It has uh, uh, it has changed the war package into jar, and uh, it would have bought in uh, some uh, some dependencies. Um, uh, some dependencies uh, like Spring Boot to start test, and I'm sure there will be a dependency management here. Uh, dependency management and dependency management it got Spring Boot dependencies inside, and it, it added a Spring Boot app uh, um, uh, class uh, which would uh, run Spring Boot application, added a properties file, and a, a, a test stub. Um, and uh, let, let's see what, what do we have next. Uh, we have uh, migrate JPA to uh, Spring Boot. Uh, it has uh, recognized that you have been using JPA. So there is this per persistence XML, which is uh, telling uh, how to connect to the database and what is the username and password, which uh, class that you have to look for, the entity description, and uh, the entity manager. So it has detected all of this and to figure out, okay, uh, it can help migrate a Spring JPA to a Spring, a Spring Boot. So let's do apply the properties and 
it is uh, reading persistent XML and then it has uh, applied that migration. So let's see, see this migration. Uh, first, uh, it has uh, added a H2, uh, H2 database, uh, a runtime database, and it has deleted the persistence XML and uh, took uh, the URL user password and driver information and uh, converted it into appropriately to uh, application properties. All of this is uh, copied over here. And uh, some of the movie beans, uh, a persistent context, uh, the unit name is uh, changed from unit name, movie unit to default. And then let's take in uh, under one is, is migrate uh, stateless EJB. Uh, stateless EJB, let's apply this recipe. Right. So uh, let's see what this has done. Uh, this has converted at EJB um, annotation to at auto wired annotation. And uh, and the same thing has been done in uh, movie rest. And then movie being the stateless is converted into at service and it's transactional because it is uh, it has entity managers. And uh, uh, for some reason, this uh, Spring Boot uh, uh, started JP has been deleted. We need uh, that's, that's a bug. We need to add it uh, uh, later. Uh, then migrate JAX RS. Apply. Uh, let's uh, migrate JAX RS. So let's see what has happened here. So uh, as you can see, at path is uh, converted into uh, spring equivalent that is at, request, uh, at rest controller and request mapping. And at post is converted into at request mapping with method is e uh, method equal to request uh, method dot post. And uh, in the movie rest, uh, uh, same thing has happened. At path parameter has been converted into at path variables, which is the spring equivalent. And query parameter is converted into request parameters. And this at consumes application JSON is, uh, is being uh, replaced here as consumes is equal to application JSON, which is a spring equivalent. And path parameter again to path variable. And it has automatically added a Spring Boot starter web because uh, you need. Uh, and it a web application setup uh, for rest to wait on. And uh, you can see that there are other uh, recipes as a uh, Spring Cloud Config Server and uh, Spring Boot 2.7230. I think um, we don't need to do that. Uh, uh, we can do uh, do that, but uh, it's not relevant to the application that we are trying to do. It is uh, quite enhancements, and we can uh, stop here and see, uh, try to run this migrated uh, uh, application. And um, now uh, this is a fully blown uh, uh, spring um, uh, spring app. Uh, so you see, there is a dependency management. There is a spring boot uh, spring boot dependencies, and uh, the spring dependencies are all uh, in included here. As I said earlier, I think it's uh, the spring boot data JPA is gone, so let's include that back. Uh, Spring Boot uh, JPA, and let's uh, try to compile and run uh, run this. So now I'm stopping the Tommy server, uh, and then I'm, uh, I'm trying to compile. Yeah, it's a good news that it it compiles uh, okay. And then if I do MVN uh, Spring uh, Spring Boot run. Uh, it should run the Spring application. Yeah, it, it, and now uh, it is a Spring application. It's not a JE application. And uh, we can interact with it. Uh, let, let's see if it works. Um, 
previously with Tommy, we used to do movie fund rest load, but now you can do uh, slash load uh, with boot and 200. We have, we have some, uh, uh, it says that it has been successfully loaded all the movies, but let, let's ask uh, to get uh, all the movies and see if the data is there and it's there. I think this is one of the uh, one of the demos on showing um, how uh, a Tommy's uh, Tommy application or a JE application uh, can be uh, uh, can be migrated. Uh, now let's look into the migration of uh, Mule Mule app migration. Uh, let's uh, open up uh, the AnyPoint Studio. Uh, so for for people um, uh, who is not familiar with the uh, the mule soft uh, it, it's an application server uh which uh, it's based on the enterprise uh, service patterns uh, everything is based on messages and uh, uh you can do uh, there, there's a ui uh, component where you can design uh, these uh, flows as you call it so uh, for this is an example so you receive an http request and then there's a flow going to the next log a message and then insert do something with the database and set a payload and return. So if you look at all of these um, UI interactions are converted into XMLs and the Spring Boot Migrator tool reads these XMLs and uh, uh, outputs a equivalent Spring integration code. Uh, Spring integration also um, uses this uh, uh, messaging pattern and there is a good one-to-one -one mapping between um, Mule, Mule application and uh, uh, a spring, a spring integration. So it, it just uh, reads as uh, you wait on 8081 uh, HTTP listener config. And uh, this is uh, my SQL configuration uh, connected to port uh, 3306. User and password, and this, uh, this is the database. And the flow is like uh, listen to slash users on get method and log uh, once you, require, you get the request. And uh, now there is a table called users, and you count the number of uh, users in uh, in here and name it as user count and uh, respond it to uh, the caller uh, with the number of users in the user count. So that, that's what that's what it does. And I have um, I have a Docker running uh, with MySQL, cool, and there's a users table already. So let's examine that. So if I go to database database table users so there, there is uh, users let's run this new application and uh, uh, save okay okay the application is deployed so let me open up a Postman. Uh, so it is 8081 users get. And if I uh, send, there is a user count is two and uh, th that's exactly the number of users uh, that I have. Uh, so if I create a new user, say three, uh, three and do uh, some email and then commit. I do this, so I have user count. <coughs> Now let's uh, try to uh, migrate uh, this new flow uh, into uh, in, into Spring integration. Uh, the way that you do that is uh, you take all these uh, flow XMLs and put it in uh, put it in a, an empty Maven project under resources folder, and you run uh, you run Spring Boot migration uh, tool. And Spring Boot Migration Tool will look into this resources folder and uh, provide appropriate recipes. So I have a, I have a scaffold already present. So I have a new app. If you look into this, there, there is not much. Uh, there's nothing, it is an empty project. It's quite empty. There's one, one class uh, uh, which does nothing. And then there's this HTTP new. Uh, the way the way it works is if I go to resources, um, uh, CD to SRC, main resources, uh, in HTTP new, and I'm going to delete all the uh, content of this, copy, is it here? 
and I'm going to uh, since the content has not changed, uh, the the mule HTTP XML is present in the resources, and now uh, you take um, uh, you take the uh, path, and you follow the same flow as you followed with uh, uh, the JE a JE app migration. You do Java minus Java. Uh, spring boot spring boot migrator dot jar and then you have the scan of mule and uh, it recognizes that it is not a spring boot uh, my uh, spring boot project yet so, and it is uh, providing you a recipe to initialize to a spring boot app so you do apply and you give uh, that app and then now if i look into uh, now if i look into this uh, it has generated a form.xml with uh, uh, with Spring Boot test, Spring Boot uh, starter, and it has added the dependencies, uh, dependency management here. And uh, it, it has added a Spring Boot, applica Spring Boot application and created an application properties and added a test scaffold. And uh, now it has uh, recognized that there are some new uh, XMLs in the in the resources, and it, it can provide a tri Java translations for it. And you can uh, get this Java translation by doing apply migrate mule to boot. Okay. Okay. What has this uh, done? And this has uh, this has generated flow configurations. Uh, that uh, that is uh, the uh, translations from the XML uh, to Java code, and then uh, it added uh, enable uh, integration to start uh, Spring Boot uh, Spring Boot integration, and uh, uh, it has copied date uh, data from, uh, for example, server port uh, 8081. The config data is uh, is over here 8081. Uh, it, it has copied this uh, this data uh, from there. Let's look into the flow configuration. If you look into the HTTP mule.xml, and uh, uh, the first thing is uh, this configuration, listener config, uh, this is 8081, right? The, the appropriate translation is here, this 8081. And then it has detected that it is using MySQL config, and uh, uh, it has uh, added the right uh, driver class, and also it has brought in the Java connector, uh, MySQL Java connector dependency automatically. And uh, here we have to fill in the username and password for connection coordinates of um, database. So it's the root, and I think it is uh, password is pw, uh, pw, and it has given an example of uh, how the JDBC URL will look like. So I'm using um, uh, MySQL, so I'm using, so not MySQL, the database name is Mio. So the database name is Mule, and uh, we have uh, the configurations ready. And the flow configuration, uh, it reads as this is a flow with the name simple HTTP, and that has converted into a function uh, with name simple HTTP. And it has detected that it, it requires DB operations, and hence uh, it has auto wired uh, the JDBC template. Um, and uh, it says here HTTP listener config, uh, the path is users and uh, the method is get. The, the equivalent translation in Spring integration is this. It's HTTP inbound gateway and uh, you wait on users. Um, you wait on slash users. And after that, uh, you log uh, you log the message in info category and which is uh, uh, which is provided here. It's uh, log.info and the message is present here. It's a received uh, received request and the message is copied over here. And since if you can see that uh, this is not a type system on the right, uh, then yeah, but uh, Java is a very much of a type system. Uh, we don't know what kind of type uh, that uh, the payload will be having. 
so we'll add it to do uh, to do uh, to give him hints uh, that oh, what now what to do here is it's linked to a multi-value map it's not it might not be the right type uh, um, so you you take that decision on what type it should be uh, since uh, since there it's a get, a get uh, there is no uh, input that is coming into uh, into the payload so we don't we don't need any of this so you can delete this to do and uh, uh, if you can see this handle will be uh, here select everything uh, select count star uh, from user users so that, that is uh, the jdbc query will be uh, done here uh, from this db db select that is the equivalent translation and the handle uh, handle is number of users it's uh, like a hash payload but this hash payload is uh, um, it's not a spring language. This is a mule expression language. So there is a to do for, for you to do that a substitute expression language with appropriate Java code. So you can take this as payload is just the payload dot to string. A P and H is payload and this is header. So it's uh, if you are printing out payload, just P dot to string. So now you can you can uh, take this off. Uh, let's go to uh, mule soft. Uh, uh, Nipoint Studio stop the application server and uh, let's uh, compile and run the migrated mule application. So I'm going to play this. So okay, it runs and MVN spring boot run. Okay, it runs. Now, uh, since uh, since it, it's also copied the right configuration of 881 port, and this is running, uh, if I hit hit this and get a response, so I'm getting a response from a Spring Boot app rather than Mule app. Uh, that's it uh, for a Mule application demo. Uh, let's go to the next demo. It's uh, converting a Spring 2.7 application to Spring 3.0 application. Uh, I have a Spring 2.7 application already ready. As you can see, it's using Spring Starter uh, 2.7.1, and it's a it's a simple uh, song application. You can uh, give the number of times a song has been played and uh, retrieve the uh, uh, the statistics of the song. But this uh, project is uh, uh, conceived in design of showing some of the automated recipes um, uh, re recipes that we can do is not necessarily the, the the best practices uh, for a spring application what does it do so there's a song controller uh, you can get uh, the, the list of tom's uh, top songs by region and you can there's a repository which is a jpi repository and then it's from a paging and sorting it implements paging and sorting repository too which uh, returns at uh, top three songs by region and uh, you can uh, find a song through locale and um, uh, and you can uh, view song get the song statistics and you can post this or uh, add the songs uh, songs statistics um, and uh, uh, this is the uh, this is how a song will look like it's a it's saved in table songs and with their uh, with the id and song name and the song stat is uh, is a song uh, how many times it has been played, and the region it belongs. And there's a repository to uh, you know, query uh, query this. And uh, uh, there's a song service uh, that uh, that for, that gives an interface to query uh, the songs uh, through uh, through a service. And uh, song controller uses the song service uh, to interact with that. The translation service. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, a class which is outside of the uh, component scan, so it doesn't come with ORG oh, Spring Boot example. It is in some uh, form of translation translation service. So in order to know for Spring to auto recognize this, uh, you uh, you tell that in it um, in Spring dot factories uh, enable auto configuration. You give that translation service. Yeah, uh, let's uh, let's try to build this and uh, run uh, this 2.7 application. So it's, uh, this MVN clean install. Okay. MVN spring uh, boot run. Okay. 
Japan's spring loading animation. Okay, so the application is up and running. Let's make some requests uh, to this application. Uh, let's go to request uh, uh, Let's add some uh, some stats. Say a song number ID number one has been played hundred uh, hundred times. ID number two has been played 50 times, uh, 50 times. And then if I ask song stats, getting the song st stats, you have ID number one played 100 times and ID number two played 50 times. Um, so uh, let's uh, let's convert this uh, spring app 2.7 to 3.0. Uh, with the exception of uh, a spring app, we have built a custom tool uh, to migrate Spring Boot application. Uh, this is to give a better understanding in uh, uh, what you're migrating. We're going to give uh, your recommendation and uh, we, we, we're going to give you an interactive way to uh, run these recipes. Um, this, uh, uh, this application is called Spring Boot Upgrade. You, again, you can download this from our releases section uh, or you can build up on your own. The way you run this is uh, you do jar minus jar, uh, Spring Boot uh, uh, jar minus jar, uh, uh, Spring Boot upgrade, Spring Boot upgrade, and you give uh, the path of uh, the Spring Boot app. I'm oh, sorry, I'm not in the right. Uh, Now we're scanning the uh, 2.7 Spring application. And you can open uh, open this. And based on all the, um, based on all the codes, uh, the Spring Boot app has uh, generated, uh, uh, generated these, um, these recipes these recipes and some of the some of them when you see a run recipe you have an automated migration uh, migration tool for it and it tells what has changed why this application is affected and it also tell uh, what, what to do uh, in order to migrate so let's go one by one let's go into the first uh, recipe uh, it's to prepare uh, spring uh, uh, prepare for spring 3.0 uh, dependency so uh, the, this is uh, a list of uh, things that we have to do uh, uh, in order uh, to not have a compilation error. Uh, there are there are some uh, uh, dependency coordinates have been changed, and uh, this uh, this recipe will take uh, will take care of that. So if you click on run recipe, that would run the recipe. And uh, this is the first one. Uh, act the actual act of converting the 2.7 uh, to 3.0. Uh, and if I uh, on this, uh, so if you you would you could see, uh, let's take it show history. Uh, Spring Boot version, the Spring Boot version is a uh, change from 2.7.1 to 3.0.0. Uh, and the next one is uh, the upgrade of Jakarta E10. Uh, this is uh, this upgrade where. Uh, the imports from Java X dot uh, persistence uh, should be changed to Jakarta dot persistence. So all of these imports uh, uh, will be changed uh, for you. And uh, uh, you click uh, run recipe, you can see that it automatically uh, changes that code. So if I look into it history here, package, so there's in song, song dot Java, Java X is converted into Jakarta, and then song stat is uh, Java X is converted into Jakarta persistence, and then song play is Java X into uh, Jakarta. Uh, and uh, uh, th this also requires uh, you don't need the version anymore, right? you just need a classifier. Um, the actuator in endpoint sanitation. Uh, sanitation. Uh, this is one of the examples where uh, we have found that you're using. Uh, 
actually actuated on class path and there there is a change uh, uh, by by default uh, the options uh, are set to secure default uh, some of the things that you were able to see will not will not be visible anymore so it's uh, the responsibility of the application developer to know how to uh, expose these uh, uh, these values uh, based on uh, rule base uh, and uh, um, and the, this is uh, this is one of the examples where uh, Spring Boot tool might not be able to help you, uh, but uh, reading this uh, this change and uh, understanding what has changed, so you can do, uh, do that by yourself. And there is uh, uh, there is references uh, on how to do how to do it and what has been changed uh, over here, so that it will aid uh, your your migration. And, this, and uh, there's another recipe logging date format. Um, the logging date format uh, is, has been changed uh, to have a T uh, uh, to support ISO standard. Um, if you don't want that, uh, you can explicitly tell the logging pattern, uh, uh, logging pattern with date format. It just uh, uh, it is telling you how to add that. Uh, go to application properties and you do, uh, do this. Uh, you can or you can run this recipe and it will do it for you. Uh, so uh, it's over here, application properties. Yeah. And uh, next one, the deprecation of the uh, Spring factories. Uh, um, so uh, in uh, Spring uh, 3, 3 dot zero onwards, uh, it, it does not uh, recognize Spring factories. Instead, you have to copy the contents into uh, this file, the ORG Spring Boot Framework uh, auto configuration imports. And it tells you uh, it tells you what to do. Uh, you you can uh, you can let uh, SBM uh, do the do that for you. Turn on the recipe. So now what will happen is the Spring Factory's contents will be gone, and um, uh, the contents from Spring dot Factories that is uh, com dot translation service has been moved uh, here. Uh, to this uh, auto configuration dot imports so com translation service. So the banner support, uh, its banner supports have been removed. Like for uh, banner dot kf for JPEG, all of those uh, is gone. You have to use text based banners. And uh, we have a GIF banner over here. Uh, the, it's because it has uh, discovered uh, uh, using GIF banner, uh, it is um, it is reporting this. So you run the recipe, that will be deleted. So you can see the banner.kf is gone. Uh, the another space is uh, constructor binding. And this, uh, uh, the constructor binding has been improved in the 3.0. There are uh, cases in which you don't need constructor, constructor binding. If you have one single constructor, uh, it will automatically recognize it as a constructor bound. Uh, there is uh, there's a class called uh, region config. That's detected in region config, it can uh, do this uh, transformation uh, and without any cost. So there is this constructor binding, and if you run this recipe, and that'll be gone. So this is uh, then constructor binding is gone. Um, another one is uh, paging and sorting repository. So if I go to uh, if I look for paging and sorting repository. Uh, over here. Uh, previously, this paging and sort sorting repository used to uh, inherit uh, CRUD repository too, but uh, since um, uh, since it's been removed, uh, uh, you uh, if you want any anything related to CRUD repository, you have to implicitly uh, add it. So if you would want that, you can run that recipe, and you would have that CRUD repository uh, come uh, committed uh, imported for you. And uh, uh, this is a common multi-part uh, upload, and this is one of the recipes where there, there is no uh, automated recipe for it. Uh, I, we have uh, recognized that uh, in song upload config, common multi-part uh, resolver has been used, and in 3.0, uh, it's been removed. Uh, it's basically, it sets the upload uh, limit size, which all you can uh, configure with the application properties. So for now, uh, the way we solve it is just let's, let's just delete it. And all of these uh, auto configuration of uh, micrometer JVM metrics, all of these are auto generated from the Spring release notes. So we, we need to add more recipes. Uh, if we are open for contribution. If you if you'd like to be involved in our community, you can open a pull request. Evolve the 
the re recipes uh, that we have in our Spring Boot Migrator. <laughs> I think uh, this uh, would have uh, <coughs> this would have uh, uh, migrated uh, uh, the application from 2.7 to 3.0. Let's uh, try to run and see uh, uh, how it goes. So uh, let's see. I'm in clean install. Okay, it runs. And then MVN um, Spring Boot run. So now it is running uh, as a, a Spring 3.0 version. Uh, let's uh, make some requests and see if it works. So the first one is uh, it's, uh, song one. Uh, so we got it 200. That's a good sign. So I say song start with two. Uh, the times played is 50, let's just say, and uh, look at this, it is 50, and let's get the uh, uh, the song stats, so yeah, you've got uh, uh, 100 that has been played, and 50 uh, is the little one. Okay, I think uh, that concludes uh, the uh, demo of moving uh, 2.7 to 3.0. So, what is, uh, what is next for uh, Spring Boot my, uh, Migrator. Uh, I think we are, we are looking for active community participation and uh, hopefully uh, we'll have a very thriving community where we can uh, uh, add, people can add lots of uh, recipes say, into our Spring Boot Migrator and uh, um, uh, the entire world can benefit uh, uh, with, uh, with the repository of, of uh, migration knowledge in one tool. Find uh, any uh, any bugs or uh, any improvements uh, that you can uh, you could do you could add to a Spring Boot Migrator. Play, please open a PR request, uh, and uh, we'll be we'll be happy to look into it. Uh, and uh, uh, I'd like to uh, end with uh, the people uh, who bought you this uh, Spring Boot Migrator. Fabian Kruger is uh, the lead in uh, uh, in this uh, Spring Boot Migrator team. He has built uh, this uh, tool from ground up. Uh, a huge thanks to him. And he, he is not able to join uh, um, us today because he is on a beach with his family uh, in a parental leave. And also the uh, contributors. Um, uh, there are uh, we are there, we have a small uh, and active community uh, now, and we'd like to thank all the contributors uh, who had made it uh, happen.